In this lesson, we're going to focus on getting everything set up on our computer that's required to build Ionic and Stencil JS applications. So we're going to start with some simple environment configuration stuff and installing what we need uh, on our computers. And we're also going to run through how to generate projects to generate a new Ionic and Stencil JS application. And we're also going to talk through the basics of running that application and its general structure, what the different files and folders do, and also how to create a build. So let's start off by talking about the dependencies we're going to need. Now, a lot of people may already have Node installed on their computer. If you do not, you will need it. Uh, I would recommend downloading the latest LTS version. So basically just come to nodejs.org, uh, click this button here to download it, and that'll allow you to set that up. And when you install Node, it's also going to install NPM, which is something that we're going to need as well. Now we will be using Capacitor throughout this course to create uh, builds of our application. And so if you don't have Node yet and you've just installed this and you'll be fine, you'll already have a, an up-to-date version. Uh, but if you already have this installed, you will require at least Node version 8.6 and NPM version 5.6. So if you do already have Node installed, just make sure that you at least have that version. And if you don't, make sure you get that version or higher first. Another thing to take note of is that if you want to create builds for iOS and Android, there are some additional dependencies required. Uh, we'll talk about this in more detail in the book, but just keep this in mind for now that uh, you can see this in the documentation here for Capacitor. There are some things you need to install for iOS and for Android. So if you do want to jump into that right away, just know that you'll need to do this first. Uh, but there is a chapter in the book dedicated to going through all of this. So now let's switch to actually generating a new stencil project. And we're going to create a stencil project that has the Ionic PWA toolkit set up inside of it so we can start building an Ionic application right away. Now, one of the cool things about stencil is that we don't even really need to install anything to get going. All we'll have to do is bring up a terminal here and to create a new stencil project, we can just run npm init stencil. So if I run that command, it's now going to prompt me for the type of project that I want to create. And as you can see here, we get three options right now. And this perhaps might change in the future. Maybe as you're going through the course now, there might be some different options, but the three that are available right now are Ionic PWA, app or component. And we can switch between these. We can choose whichever starter we like. And the one we're going to be using is Ionic PWA. And that'll give us a project with the Ionic web components installed and we can start building an Ionic application. And even though this is set up to uh, create PWAs, it can also be used to create iOS and Android applications with Ionic as well. Uh, the app option is just a generic stencil app. So it won't have Ionic installed. Uh, it'll just be a generic stencil application. And then the component option is for building a reusable component or set of components with Stencil.js. So these are the types of components that you could then say build with Stencil, compile that down into just a generic web component that could then be used uh, in a Stencil application, or it could be used in Angular or React or Vue, uh, or you could just use it on just a standard website with no frameworks or anything like that. Uh, but for now, we're just going to focus on creating an Ionic PWA. So we will select that option and it's going to ask us to name our project. We'll just call it uh, Ionic Stencil To Do. And we'll hit confirm. And there we go, almost instantly that is all done now. So what we can do is just switch into that project by running CD and then the name of our project. And then we can run these commands here. So we have the npm start command, which will uh, start a development server and run our application in the browser. Uh, that will have live reloading. So as we make changes, that's going to update that application. And then the npm run build command will create the production version of your application when you're ready to test or deploy it. So let's run npm start now, and we'll just see what that looks like. Okay, so that has launched in the browser now. And what we're going to do now is just right click and click on inspect. And that will launch this uh, sort of mobile browser view here. If you click this little uh, button up here, that will toggle this uh, emulator on and off. Uh, but it's always nice to sort of develop in uh, this sort of view since we are developing a mobile application, it makes sense to view it 
in that kind of viewport. So the default application that is generated is just a home page and a profile page that we can click on and it'll display the profile page. Uh, we're not gonna focus too much on what the application is doing right now. We will be changing this to serve as a to-do application. Uh, but for now, we just wanna take a look at the general project structure and talk through what some of the files and folders are doing. Okay, so I've opened up the project in Visual Studio Code and we're just going to take a look at some of these files and folders on the left and talk just briefly about what is happening. So we have our node modules folder, which uh, if you are familiar with general sort of modern web development, won't come as much as a surprise. Uh, this is just our dependencies for the application. And you'll see with uh, Stencil, the dependencies are actually very small. There isn't a whole lot of uh, dependencies listed in here, uh, but either way, we don't really need to worry about what is happening in that folder. Uh, the main folder that we will need to be concerned with is this source folder here. And so this is where all of the coding, or at least most of the coding for our application is going to happen. So we'll just quickly go through these folders one by one. Uh, we have our assets folder here, which is just for static assets. So things like images, JSON files, just any sort of static asset we want to ship with the application. As you can see right now, there's just some uh, icons in here. We have the components folder, which is the main folder we will be working with. This is the folder that will hold all of our components that we are creating with Stencil. And in the end, our entire application is just built from a bunch of different components. And so the entire structure of the application is just components within components within components. So you'll see this app root component here. This is really the most, in, well, not the most important one, but it's sort of what kicks everything off. And so you will generally have an app root component in every single one of your projects. And if we open up the TSX file, you'll see the general uh, structure of the component here. Uh, we're not gonna worry about too much about what's happening on the screen in this lesson. We'll cover that in more detail in a later lesson. But this is what is being used to create our app root component. And you can see in the template that we're creating here, we have the ion app component, then we have the, uh, the ion navigation, uh, the router. So this is the template for our root component. And if you look in our index.html file, like any sort of website, this is the first file that's going to be loaded up and it's what is going to uh, kick off everything else. And in here you can see we're loading up a build app.js. So that's loading the, uh, the build of our application that's generated. And then down in the body tag here, all we have is app root. And if we switch back to our app root component, you'll see it, this is being set up on a tag called app root. So that means if we write app root as a sort of custom tag in our index.html file, this component is going to be loaded up in that spot. And then we have this ion nav component with this routing information, and that's going to handle triggering different components. And again, we're going to talk about this in a little bit more detail later, but uh, in this case, we're saying if we're at the sort of default URL, we want to load up the app home component. So then it's going to grab this app home component and the ion nav is going to load that up and display it. So what is basically happening is that we'll have this app root component and inside of that, we have this template here with an ion nav and then inside of the ion nav, we're going to have the app home component. So our app home component will be inside of the app root. And then this app home component could even have additional components inside of that. And so our entire application kind of just becomes this tree of various components. So that's why this folder is kind of the most important one because it's where we'll be doing most of the work. And each component is made up of a TSX file, which is what we're looking at now, and a CSS file for the styling. There is also this uh, e2e.ts and spec.ts files. Uh, that is for automated testing, which is a topic uh, we're not going to cover in this book or in this video course, and it's a bit more advanced. So uh, if you're familiar with testing, uh, you can certainly make use of those. Uh, if you want, you can delete these files if you don't plan on using them, uh, or you can just leave them there. Uh, it's not going to make a difference. Okay, so let's close that folder up for now, move on to global. Uh, this is something you won't need to touch too much, but basically we have the app.css file here. Uh, this is going to be used to apply any sort of global styles you want to set up. 
And then we have the app.ts file, which basically has the sole task of importing the Ionic core, uh, which is Ionic's web components. And we can also do some configuration in here if we want to. Again, this is another file that you probably won't end up touching too much. Uh, we have this helpers file here, which you know isn't entirely necessary, but it's here in the uh, default project. And basically this is just exporting a little helper function that's being made uh, use of in a component. So if you wanted to put some kind of little utility functions to do little calculations or something like that, you could export those in here and then import them into your components and make use of them. We have the components.d.ts file, uh, not something you need to worry about at all. This is just defining some types and interfaces for uh, the various components. Uh, you won't really be making any uh, modifications in here. As you can see, it says this is an auto-generated file. Uh, so if you do make changes, they're going to get overwritten anyway. We have our index.html file, which we've already talked about a bit. Basically, this, uh, this kicks off the whole process, loads in our application build, uh, sets up that root component, which then takes care of uh, adding everything else in. Now uh, we have the, another interfaces file again, don't need to really worry about that. And then a manifest.json file, which is for configuring our PWA uh, settings, uh, which is something you'll sort of worry about at the end of building your application when you're sort of finalizing everything. Okay, so let's shut that source folder now. We've covered most of the important things here. Uh, the only other thing really to mention is this www folder. Uh, this is the built output of your application. So when you create a build by running npm run build or you're just serving your application, uh, this will be generated from the code that's in source. So basically everything gets compiled and built and put into this folder. And this is the folder that will actually be deployed. So if you are deploying your application as a PWA to the web, this is what would be uploaded. Uh, if you're using Capacitor to create iOS or Android applications, it is this folder that will be used to pull in your application into the native build. And again, this is something that you shouldn't edit. Uh, any changes you make should be in source, not in www, because this is just going to get overwritten. And all the rest of the stuff that's in here is just some simple uh, standard sort of configuration files uh, that, again, you won't really need to touch, except perhaps, uh, perhaps package.json if you want to update some uh, dependencies. Uh, but as I mentioned, most of what we need to be concerned about is what is happening in this source file. So obviously I've kind of flown through uh, describing a lot of the things that are going on in here. We will take a much more detailed look at these things in the rest of this video course and even more so in the book itself. So if you are sort of a bit overwhelmed at this point, you're not really sure what's going on, don't worry too much about it. Uh, again, my main goal here is just to expose you to a lot of different concepts so they are uh, somewhat familiar uh, when we come to discuss them in more detail. Uh, in the next lesson in this course, we are going to actually start uh, coding our to-do application and we'll start making some changes uh, inside of this source folder.